Welcome to Crusade... Hang on a minute. This is RimWorld. RimWorld, for those of you who don't know, is a colony survival game. And if you're here for CK2, please stay, enjoy the video, because I know you will. Because there are some similarities in the way that the game progresses and the actual core elements and the story that are very, very similar to CK2. So, for those of you who don't know, RimWorld is a colony-based simulator uh, survival story game. It says they're a story generator, but I kind of disagree with that. It's a little bit vague. Um, oh, it's not wrong, but it's just very vague. So... The, uh, the idea of the game is is you are people stranded on this planet out in the galaxy somewhere, this rim world, if you will, um, which is a little bit out of the way. It's a little bit isolated, and, and you have a few survivors. You could change the, uh, as we'll see in a minute, you can change the, the way you start the game, but the overall goal is, it, is, is to survive and actually create a, a successful colony that can survive against, you know, harsh weathers, diseases, raids, things like that. And the idea is you get attached to your characters and watch them horribly, horribly die. So a lot of people seem very interested in this, and it's one of my favorite games. It's one of my most played games as well. I've been playing it since, like, Alpha. And it's now almost in full release. That being said, I've added a shit ton of mods to it. Not a shit ton of mods. Not mods that change the gameplay and the way things work, because I don't want to be, to be too confusing for people. But games that just add a little bit of extra stuff in there. So, like doormats for example more furniture things that i like but aren't too overpowered so we've got like embrasures there fences and floors i'll go through this mod list uh in more detail at a later date but for now if any of you are interested in what i've got feel free to take a look through this list slide the video down pause it and i'll write it up in the description as well so we have to come up with what we're gonna do our starting characters you know how we're gonna play the game what do we want to do with our colony now i've, I've sort of had two ideas for how we might want to do this. My first idea that I actually tried doing on this channel a long time ago, before CK2, was building a Jurassic Park. So we go around, we tame dinosaurs, we capture dinosaurs, go across the planet, find different ones, and build ourselves a big theme park that people can come and visit, and pay us to, to come and visit with the help of some mods. Or, and I kind of like this idea, we build ourselves a sort of Fallout Raider-style base, where we have an arena, a coliseum, and this base will be led by, like, you know, Elrang and Rhino and all of our classic CK2 characters. They'll be in charge of it. And you guys, I'll do giveaways on the channel and patrons can come and join in as well. They can give me the names for their characters if they want to see them add to the game. Do giveaways on the channel. You guys can join the faction. You can join our, our little squad out here. Join our base on the Rimworld. And we'll fight you to the death. That seems like a cool idea. I like the idea of my patrons killing one another to please... The god that is Jerry King and Elrang. So that's probably what I'm going to go for right now. And I'll sort of talk about some of the base mechanics. But I don't get too inside baseball with it. As you sort of pick it up as we go along. It's very self-explanatory right. So we have four scenarios to start off with here. We have three crash landed survivors. We have Lost Tribe. The Rich Explorer. Or Naked Brutality. So crash landed is your sort of default. As it says there. The classic remote experience. You start with three people. You get a sort of average amount of starting things here so a couple of decent weapons you get yourself some steel some wood for building with and then the map's got some things on it you can start as a tribe where you have no technology at all you have to research the technology and build your base up you start with some you know like a bow or a knife things like that not very advanced at all you play as a rich explorer so one guy's got a lot of gold a lot of resources but you've only got one character so if he gets the plague immediately and dies well that's game over or they've added a new one in the latest patch which is naked brutality you underwent anesthetic for a minor surgery, now you've awoken on a drop pod, crashing into a distant planet. Huh. There's nothing fair about this scenario, it's extremely difficult and death can happen with it, for any reason. So this is the hardest of the hard. You know, this would be very difficult. You start with nothing but one character. I played this a little bit and it was kind of going okay. You have to rely on a lot of, you know, traps, guerrilla warfare, sort of sneak things like that. But we're going to go with Crash Landed. And I actually have a mod that lets us fully customise our starting characters as well. Just so you guys get an experience of the game. And I don't want to die immediately and put you guys off. So, uh, these, although it says AI storytellers, are actually just difficulty levels. This is one of the things that sort of put me off for a mod. Because I was like, oh, I don't want it to be like a campaign. That's not what this is at all. These are just different types of difficulty. So, Classic... You get a, a slow curve, as it says, an increasing curve of challenge. And depending on what you pick out of these, it will either make that curve harder or, you know, more shallow, easier, basically. So peaceful, you build a community in a sandbox environment. Um, you get builder, which is mostly about base building with some issues. Or you can go for savage, where you're constantly getting raided and diseases. They have, like, Phoebe Chillax, which is lots of times between disasters, but at hard difficulties, it will hit just as hard if not harder than anyone so you know you get a long break and then a big raid and then a long break and then a big raid or you've got random random which is completely random so you might go days and days and days with nothing happening then a volcano might appear or a tornado might sweep through your base and destroy everything for the purposes of this place or at least to start off with we'll start on uh, we'll go on classic mode and we'll go medium because you know i've played remod a decent amount to know that that's fine 
So this is something they've added here. Commitment mode or reload anytime. For those of you who are experienced in CK2, this is basically Iron Man mode or base game mode. Reload anytime is, is base game. Commitment is Iron Man. You've only got also saves and you can only save when you close the game. So we're going to go with reload anytime. Now we've got to design our world. The game does it all automatically. All we've got control over is the seed, which is just a random planet that will generate. So if you basically get a nice looking planet, you could share the seed with another player and they can generate exactly the same planet. Uh, we're going to actually start with the seed of... Piggy the Dragon. So this is going to be Planet Piggy the Dragon. And uh, we'll go ahead. We can generate as much of the map as possible. So 30% of the globe will generate. Or 100%. The bigger the planet, the more factions there are going to be. And obviously the slower the game is going to run. Um, I'm going to just make it 30% for the purposes of our playthrough here. Overall rainfall. Again, you can have low and have a desert planet. Or high and have a swampy planet. We'll just stay on normal. And overall temperature will stay on normal as well. So we've got the, the best mixture of environments. This will be kind of like an Earth-like planet. And we'll generate it. Now, again... If you've gone for 100%, it's take a very long time to generate, but you have a whole world. So if you're going for a long campaign, that might be ideal for you. And here is our planet, or at least what we can see of it. We have a pretty good mix, actually. Obviously, a large desert up there in the north. We've got a desert in the east there. Some swamp lands here, tiger, I should say. And then, a, you know, lots of plains, things like that. We've got a bog. And then randomly generated names like Yoshi's Joy Grove and Bad Muffalo Forest. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't go and visit Yoshi's Joy Grove after coming from the Bad Muffalo Forest. You'll never hear the end of it. Now, we've got to pick where do we want to start. Now, these little houses, the little, uh, these are supposed to be like wigwam, TP style structures. These represent pirates. So, these are all different factions. So, the colors also represent the same faction. So, these blue houses will all belong to the same faction. The communal confederacy of Quaberon all own sort of this area of the map. Then, the pirates have a, long, a large sort of standing here. Actually, the, the, the confederacy there own sort of, uh, a lot of the map, they have a lot, don't they? They're quite well spread out. Whereas this one, not so large here. Faction uh, Kobin Quarter has sort of this central area and some provinces up there in the north. And you've got like tribes as well. They'll be the low tech ones. And then, of course, pirates as well. Um, we want to pick somewhere that's going to be fairly sensible for our base, I think. We probably want to pick somewhere close to, not too close to any pirates, but, you know, kind of uh, close to other communities, so we can maybe trade with them. You can see these roads, so you can actually send caravans down to different bases as well, and the travel time depends on the environment, things like that. So ideally, we want to start on a road, maybe in a mountain somewhere. What about, like, here? And we can actually uh, see what this one will offer us. So there's not very much rain here, only 675 millimeters, so we actually probably want to go south. But if we go too far south, we'll end up in, like, tropical rainforests or, or swamps, which will be very difficult to uh, build on. You see it says there are parasites. This one will give us a lot of diseases. We want to go on somewhere that's relatively temperate, but a decent amount of rain as well. So, what about this one? We've got, okay, 2,000 millimeters of rain there. That's pretty good. Now, what I'm mainly looking for here is the growing period. So, this is the amount of time where you can grow crops. 50 to 60 days. That's basically all year round. Um, south as possible. I oh, my God. We're going to have to start in the bad muffalo forest, aren't we? I can see it. It's going to happen. Year round. Okay, awesome. That's pretty good. Um... Tropical rainforest year round. There's berries, so we can actually forage without having to worry about it. Large hills. So large hills will give us somewhere to obviously build our base into. We can build it around the hill or in the hill, for example. Um, are these these are quite close to pirates, though. Oh, it's got to be in Yoshi's Joy Grove, hasn't it? What am I talking about? Now, we can also see the stone types. This isn't particularly relevant, but it's just what your base will look like. Because obviously you're going to be harvesting that type of stone. Granite limestone slate. Now, I'm going to build into a mountain just to give us a little bit of defensibility. The average temperature, 21 degrees, year-round. And, of course, we are in Yoshi's Joy Grove there. In, in a swampy area of Yoshi's Joy Grove. Oh, dear. So, normally, if you're playing RimWorld without any mods, you would pick any of these three characters to take on your adventure. And they might appear in your campaign as well. You can rename them. But for the for our playthrough, and a mod I really like using is something called Prepare Carefully, which actually allows you to fully customize your colonists. So, we're going to do it from scratch and customize our boys Again, kind of similar to CK2 in the way you design your characters here. So you've got your stats here. You've got traits, the ages, the way they look, things like that. So we're going to start off with, uh, we go for a little bit of a random character here. And we are going to call you L Rang. And you are not going to be called L Rang so Sawyer. You're going to be called L Rang. Was it Elf Boy, his dynasty name? My God, how did I remember that? It's been so long since we've actually played as L Rang, eh? All right, there we go. L Rang. Biological age. Um, This is the... Obviously, his biological age and his chronological age are different because you can put characters into deep freeze. You know, this does take place in the future. So we can put them in uh, in cryosleep or crypto sleep, I think they call it in this. So Elrang is actually very old. Obviously, he's an immortal, uh, long-lived elf. So we'll make him like 503. But biologically, he'd probably be in like his 30s, wouldn't he? Still be quite a young man. 
and his hair, he did actually have a, a yellow mohawk, so that's pretty appropriate. And you know what? That's not bad. He did have a beard. Can we change his beard? Um, maybe accessory? I don't know how we change his beard if we can do that. Uh, maybe it is under hair. Maybe they can't have beards. Oh, shit. Bamboozled. I thought they could. All right, well, let's not worry about that too much. There we go. There's, there's Alrang. We won't change his clothes or anything because we don't want to make it too unbalanced. Backstory. So you get to pick backstories which affect his traits, affect what he's good at, you know, things like that. And what was Elrang? He was sort of uh, a, a medieval lord, wasn't he, in his, in his youth? So what have we got? We've got medieval squire? Uh, medieval lordling? Okay, that's not bad. Construction minus one, mining level one, plants level one. But he's good at social, so he'd be good at recruiting people and discussing with other people. Um, no, maybe not. He was, he was a mage. Can we go for, like, a mage? Do you think there's one on this list? I've gone with Doomsday Pariah for Elrang, because I think that was the most appropriate. Now, that means he can't do Doctor and he can't do Art, but, I mean, was Elrang known for his healing and artistic ways? Not really. Let's pick him some traits. So, what was Elrang like during his, uh, during his life? Well, he was a little bit bloodlusted. He gets a rush from hurting people. I mean, he did conquer an entire continent. He was a warlord for a while. Fast learner, that seems appropriate. He did have a ridiculous amount of learning in CK2, as you might remember, so we'll definitely go with that one. Greedy, might be appropriate. Hard worker, he was a hard worker, wasn't he? Global work speed plus 20%. He definitely saved his people and formed his own empire, so I feel like hard worker is uh, pretty legitimate there. What else have we got? Uh, psychically hypersensitive. I mean, he was psychically hypersensitive. He was a very magical character, so I think we might go with that one. Um... Just double check before we do so, because this will be the last trait we can take for him. Well, we could take more, but this will be the last trait we actually do take for him. Uh, transhumanist. He feels limited by his human body. Well, that doesn't make sense. Too smart. What does that do? Makes him learn 75% faster, but makes him have makes him more likely to break down if uh, bad things happen to him. Let's make him psychically hypersensitive. So that could be very good or very bad. If, say, there's a negative psychic effect, he's obviously going to be a much more sensitive to that type of thing. To sort of reflect his magical background. So we'll make our Rangar sort of our main colony leader. He's going to be the one that's in charge. And uh, we'll buff up his stats to represent that. So what was Elrang good at? Well, he was pretty good at combat. So we're going to up his melee there. Um, he did build an empire. So I'm going to give him like 11 construction. And uh, we'll get rid of... These are the passions. So these affect how fast he learns skills. They affect uh, how much they enjoy doing jobs associated with those skills. We'll deal with that afterwards. Uh, intellectual. He was very much an intellectual. That was his main thing. And he was very good at crafting, you know, artifacts crafting uh, the undead, from what I recall. Pretty good at that as well. Was he good with animals? Holy shit, he had that whole menagerie, didn't he? Definitely good with animals. Awesome, right. I feel like that's pretty good. That's not too overbalanced either. You know, his highest is 15. He was an avid learner. He did enjoy his animals, and I would say he was pretty good at combat as well. He did enjoy that. He did a lot of time in his uh, different... <laughs> he did a lot of time in his different guilds. So there is... Elrang. So we're going to go ahead and save that character as Elrang so that we could, you know, load him in if we ever need to or load him into different save games as well. All right. There's our first one. Now we're going to have Vladlina. Nope. You are going to be called uh, Ever Chosen. I've got to remember her name now. It was, it was Gothruda, wasn't it? But I have no idea how to put in. I'm going to have to look up the alt code. There we go. So I've gone with Gothruda because unfortunately we can't add Thorns or Eths into that. So that's what I've gone with. And I've created a backstory as well. She was a medieval lordling, which is obviously true. And then she became a warrior. She united the clans of Norska, as you might remember. Bloodlust, Ironworld, Psychopath, and she has a cut scar across her face, as she did in the game. She's very good at shooting, because she did launch a hell of a lot of fireballs. Good at melee. Fairly good at intellectual, because she did teach herself magic from, from nothing as well. So there is our Everqueen gone through. Let's go ahead and save this character as the Everqueen. Nice. Fortunately, Everchosen didn't fit there. So, Lumpy... Uh, who are we going to add now? I feel like we need ourselves a social character, one that's good with trading, one that's good at creating things, you know, doing things uh, to please other people. So I think we're going to go for, we are going to go for Diz Waltney, the eternal president himself, Waltney, and then we're going to rename him from Lumpy, Lumpy is a terrible name, we're just going to call him Diz, uh, Diz is fine, eternal president will be great, but I don't think it'll fit, eternal Eternal Prez. No, not even close. Okay, Diz is going to have to just stick with Diz. Now, he is he's an older gentleman, so we'll say he's in his in his mid-40s. Chronological age, well, he wasn't 800 from what I remember. Oh, my God, this is going to take ages. But, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't immortal except in spirit, you know, because he was the, the ever-chosen there. As far as I recall, he was quite an elderly white man. So, let's go ahead and just flip that over a second. Your Eternal President, Diz Walney, 45 years old. He's an apocalypse survivor and became a villain. 
I feel like that's appropriate. You know, he did forcibly unite America with his iron fist. Hates dumb labor, optimist, super immune because he did live forever. Um, and as you might remember in the series, he actually had cancer pretty early on and then lived to the ripe old age of 75 or something like before he actually died. He's got an old gunshot wound in his torso because he is American. I feel like that's part of the course. Very good at social. You know, convinced all of America to join him as, uh, well, the new U US. So, I feel like giving him a high social there is pretty appropriate. And, of course, we've got decent construction there because he did build his own empire. Good amount of shooting because he is American. Unfortunately, I can't change that either just because he is, uh, I think a villain gives him shooting. Yeah, it does. So, as you can see there, shooting plus four, uh, mining minus two, social plus six, intellectual plus two, hauling disabled. So, he can't actually, he won't carry things around because he hates dumb labor. Because that's the type of guy that I figured he is. And there he is wearing his powdery wig. So we go ahead and save ourselves, Diz Waltney. And there he is, the best boy, Jerry King. Of course, the classic builder of the pyramid, so he does have good construction and good money because he did restore Luxor. Melee, because he is an absolute unit, was incredibly good with marshals. You might remember we were trying to get him up to 100 marshals during the live stream. Artistic. I think he's an artistic man if he was in charge of restoring the pyramids back to their former beauty. A night owl, because, as we remember, he was a mummy that was reborn. Uh, I couldn't make him blue, unfortunately, so I just... Randomize the skin color. Quick sleeper because he is a mummy, but also sickly because he is a mummy. That is the downside. You would probably be a little bit ill. Child slave because he was born in Egypt all those many years ago. And of course, is a castaway because he woke up on the shores of Iceland. Trauma savant. Uh, probably, you know, being a mummy and then sailing halfway across the world would do that to you, I think. Jerry King. Let's. I've already saved him. We can start. We can customize our equipment as well if we want, but just to keep things fair, I don't want to mess with that any more than we already have. We have some pretty good characters here. They're not ridiculously OP, and they're very specialized in their own areas. So, you know, we're going to have some downsides to that. Let's actually start the game. All right, don't worry about that. The three of you awake, four of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi. How appropriate for Jerry King. To the sound of sirens and ripping metal, you barely get to the escape pods before your ship is torn apart. Sometimes later, you land on this unknown rim world. Wow, okay, here they are. Boom. Our boys. Elrang, Everqueen, Jerry King, and the Eternal President is Waltney. They have landed on the Rimworld. This is their new home. And you know what? We actually got a pretty good starting area. Look at how well defen defensible this is. So, this is our map. This is where we're going to be building our base, our, our Colosseum, for you guys to fight to the death in. And uh, we're going to have our four leaders, our, our four kings. So what are we going to do to start off with? Well, it's basic remote to start off with, unfortunately, because we don't want to die very quickly. Oh, we have a pet dog called Julia. Can we rename you, pet dog? Um, I would get a mod to rename the dog. You guys suggest some names for the dog in the comments, and I'll pick the most upvoted one, or I'll pick the one I find the funniest, or the one that's the best pun, or something along those lines. We'll rename the dog, because Julia doesn't fit in with the series at all as we know it. Let's go ahead and allow everything across the map and start work on our glorious... Glorious base. So architect is where you build everything and designate areas, things like that. Actual world manipulation. Of course, you can see here we can mine, we can smooth off the surfaces to make these walls a little more appealing if you want to build your base straight into a, into a cave or something. Chop wood, hunt. These are just your general commands. Then, like I said, these are for building. So we've got structures, we've got, uh, these are buildings that do other things. So you can use this to butcher animals or this one to cook your food. You've got furniture. Misc is... Sort of things that you wouldn't be going to too particularly. So graves, sarcophaguses, party spots, caravan spots. I can't wait for the party spot to be useful, let me tell you. Security, traps, sandbags. Eventually as we research, we'll unlock, you know, turrets, things like that. Uh, industrial will be our rollers, which is from a mod that allows us to sort of factorio style. Move things around to different rooms automatically. Floors, uh, floors. I think that should be pretty straightforward. Recreation there, so we could have ourselves a poker table for them to play poker at. That's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Temperature control, we've got hygiene control there for a another mod here that basically allows us to build hygiene. Because I feel like it's a big thing that's missing from this game. And then hygiene misc there as well. We can build ourselves a litter box. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Irrigation sprinklers too. That could be very useful for farms. Well then, first things first. We need to designate them an area to live in. And honestly, looking at it now, we're in a very defensible area. Like I was saying, this is actually... You know, a separate area up here. We could definitely fortify this wall out a little bit with our own sort of stone um, fortifications there. And build this out so it's it's blocked off. So I'm thinking we put the base down here. Because then we've only got to really worry about enemies coming across these plains. So they can come in on the corners of the map. And you can't build in the corners of the map just to stop you, you know, blocking it off. But for the most part, we could also block this area off. St stone this up a little bit more. And maybe even block this off. Then we've only got to worry about enemies actually spawning over here. Or moving around. You know, we could build like a big gate across here as well. That could be very cool. All right, let's do it then. First things first, we need to designate an area where they're going to live. So I'm going to go ahead and 
Maybe just wall across. Straight across here with the wood. I assume we started with some wood. Yeah, we do. So we got some wood there. So why don't we wall straight across from here to here? There's some raffle easy. They're gonna have to chop that down. And we'll sort of make this area our starting area. So we want to have them a place to dump all their stuff in. So create a dumping zone there. And they should immediately start work on that. But you can customize all of their schedules and everything, which is what I'm going to do now. So the ones in red, they don't like doing or hate doing. If you assign them to a job they hate doing, they're not going to be very happy and they're going to lose mood. And mood is represented by their bars behind. It does go into a lot more detail now, and I'll talk about that later on as we come across it. The ones that are whiter are the ones they're better at. So obviously Diswaltney is very, very good at negotiation and being a prison warden. Whereas we have like uh, Jerry, Jerry King, good at construction. So obviously the man built the pyramids. So what you might want to do is set them to prioritize the things they're good at. So the way the prioritizing works is these ones will always prioritize over the ones further down the list. These are considered the less important jobs. These ones are the most important jobs. So obviously fighting a fire in your base is much more important than, say, researching something or cleaning the stairs off or, or some crap like that. I like that I could have picked anything in the game and I picked the one thing that isn't in RimWorld. Stairs. So what we're going to do is pretty straightforward. This is the way I like to do it. I'm going to go ahead and set up Elrang's jobs and then copy it down just to save ourselves some time here. So when they can, we always want them fighting fires. We always want them being a patient if they're ill. We always want them resting in bed if they're ill and hauling things urgently. So these are things I will mark for them to haul manually rather than them doing it automatically. So that would be very, very urgent. Basic, what is that? This is new. Unskilled and easy task, releasing prisoners, flipping switches on machines. Okay, well, we'll have them do that urgently. The rest I'm going to blank out and specialize as we go here. So let's go ahead and remove all of these from their schedule. Nice, okay. This is, this is, <clears throat> if there was a quick clear button, that'd be nice, but I can't imagine it'd be too useful. All right, so Elrang, what do we want Elrang to do? This is how good he is at handling animals. Now, as we know, Elrang ran an incredible menagerie, but right now it's not particularly relevant. We've got more important things to do, so I'll deal with that later. Fishing. Now, this is, again, part of a mod. Now, we don't have any water on this map, do we? So fishing, we're not going to, wait, is that water? I don't think that counts. I think that might just be, um, what is that, marsh? Yeah, no, unfortunately, that doesn't count. We don't have any water anywhere besides that. Maybe we could terraform some, maybe dig a massive hole. I'm not sure. Let's not worry about that then for now. What do we want Elrang doing? Elrang can build because he is pretty good at building. So we're going to set him to construction two. Then we'll have him growing, because in this early game, we're going to need to grow some crops very quickly before we start to death. And hunting as well, I feel like we'll, we'll set him that. Mining is very important. Plant cutting, I'm going to set to one. Because plant cutting is what you're manually telling them to chop down. And we're not going to be doing that very often, so I'll set that to one as well. And we'll worry about the rest later on. And then we'll copy this down. I should have copied it down before that. So, the other queen. What do we want her to do? Hunting, because she's incredibly good at combat, as we know, shooting, things like that. She's not very good at these, so we'll, we'll stop her from doing these things. We'll have a construct. If there are things to build, I want them to build it as quick as possible, so we have her doing that. And mining as well. Growing clock, she's only got one out of 20, so I don't need growing anything, thanks. Jerry, the castaway, he's going to be... Wait, who should be our doctor? 8 out of 20. 8 out of 20. Okay, so the other queen can be our doctor along with uh, Jerry King there. Warden? Not going to be relevant for a while. We'll sort these out when we actually have a reason to do so. Jerry King is going to be our main builder, our number one best boy, and also our main miner there as well. But like I said, because it prioritizes right to left, or left to right, sorry, construction will always happen before mining, despite the fact they're all priority one. So the way it'll work, say for example with Jerry King, is... If there is a fire, he'll fight the fire. Then if there's a patient, he'll go to the patient. And that'll move all the way down. And then it'll go to anything with priority two. So then he'll start growing. And say if we had a priority two over here, then he'll tailor. But obviously we don't want him to do that. It'll, sort, it'll, be, it'll become more apparent as we play. It's a little difficult to explain it. But it'll do all the ones first. Then it'll go through the list, look for all the twos. Then it'll go all the way again through and look for the threes and the fours like that. Do you want us to do anything else? Not really right now. We are going to need a cleaner, but yeah, we'll cross that hurdle as we get there. We don't want everyone hauling as well. So if they can't do anything else... We'll have them uh, hauling goods. Now, Diz Waltney won't do that because he's a, he's a stuck-up prude, so we won't worry about that. And then cleaning can be the very lowest of the low priority because that's just tidying up the base. You know, we're not too worried about that. Awesome. Right, what else have we got then? Diz Waltney. You, my friend, are pretty good at construction. Now, we need to cook. Oh, shit. Jerry King's our best cook. So if they're not really good at cooking, they could give you food poisoning. Well, that's one thing we're going to have to worry about here. Diz Waltney, obviously, negotiation of Warden are his strong points, but he's pretty shit at more or less everything else entirely. Um, four out of... Oh, God, Jerry King's going to have to be our cook as well as our builder. All right, then. So we'll have him cook food before he does everything else because that's probably the most important thing we actually want our colonists fed here. Oh, God, Jerry King. He's a mummy as well. Everybody's going to get food poisoning, and that's the way it's going to have to be. All right, so now if we unpause it, they will actually go off and do that. And this is the medical tab, so this allows you to see what they're good at, what they're bad at. So Jerry King is a trauma savant, so he's much better at manipulating things, doing things, because he has that... 
tra- a trauma savant is basically someone who's who's had a knock to the head and suddenly you know there are stories of people getting knocked to the head and can suddenly speak french it's the equivalent except jerry king is good at doing stuff so he's really shit at talking and really shit at hearing because he is jerry king an undead mummy so as we can see here all of our characters are actually very average they get the best medicine possible and we're gonna set jerry ever Everqueen and Jerry King there because they're both doctors can tend to themselves as well. But that's not a bad idea. This is their work schedule. So midnight obviously to 11pm here. We're going to have to work all the way through for these first couple of days. And we'll have to remember to change it later on. We can just set up one schedule and paste it over. I'll have them a couple of hours of recreation at the end of the day there. So that, that's when they'll have fun and sort of relax. Stress is a big part of this game. If they get too stressed, if you're not filling out their bars like the sim style. Then they are going to have mental breakdowns, things like that. Um, a sign is to deal with outfits and drug policies. We won't deal with that. This is the overview of our animals. So we can see our Labrador there. Um, only gets herbal medicine. You know what? You get the best quality. And this is where they're allowed. They're allowed everywhere. If we say home, they'd only be allowed inside our home, which is this blue area here. Not really worth it right now. Uh, robots. We haven't got any robots. Wildlife. This shows everything on the map. So we have... Uh, we, we can see all our animals here. The percentage chance that they will, if we shoot at them, attack us back. So elephants will attack us 10% of the time. Panthers will attack us 10% of the time. Castle warriors as well. So what we want to be hunting are, are the, the lower chance ones. Things like uh, tortoises, monkeys, chinchillas, things like that. That aren't going to get us killed if we actually want to hunt them. We can also tell them to, you know, hunt specific ones from here. Or even try and tame them. Get ourselves a pet rhino or a pet elephant. Or maybe get gored in the process. Maybe not, eh? This is our research tree. Now, this is a big mod that I've got to make research easier. If you're playing with a lot of mods, you definitely want to set yourselves up a research tree. And again, this is basically how research trees work in every other game. Say we wanted to research uh, smithing, you would pick smithing. But say you wanted to go for flak armor, which requires machining and another one first, you would pick flak armor. So they would do smithing, machining, then flak armor instead. But for now, we want to pick something that's probably a good start. The ones on the left-hand side are going to be the easiest research, and that's how many points it takes. So, the more points you got, the longer the research is going to take there. So, for example, if we look right down here, Uranium Slug Turret takes 3,000, but it also requires all the other stuff before it. So, Auto Cannon Turrets, Gun Turrets, Blowback Operation, Gunsmithing, sh shit like that. We want to go pretty straightforward. I feel like something like Carpets would be bad. Terrain Rehabilitation that allows us to build on, you know, rough stone marshes, that type of thing. The ability to grow trees, probably not a bad idea either. Brewing Beer, maybe not too important. Smithing, um, what are we going to go for? Water filtration seems like it might be important. Yeah, I feel like that's not a bad plan to start off with, so we'll go for it. So to research that, they're going to have to research septic tanks, sludge compost, and then filtration. Now, the, the sludge, the, the, the sewage, we can use as a fertilizer for our farms as well. So that's going to kill two birds with one stone. And that will show us that we've got two things queued up there, and one thing being researched, that being the septic tanks, and they're, they're the queue. The world allows us to see the world, just in case you've forgotten. There's us, obviously, the big white one. Our closest neighbors in Yoshi's Joy Grove are the Slayers of War. They sound fun. And then we've also got the White Antelope Tasker, a tribe over there. And we can see what they are willing to buy. So we can send caravans over there to trade with them. We can form a caravan and set a route, things like that. Um, and again, these guys aren't going to be interested. They'll just attack us on site. So we really don't want to deal with those guys, to be honest. And that's basically it. The only other thing we've got to worry about is the actual character tabs. So this will show what they're doing. Um, Diz Waltney spoke to Elrang about learning chess. That's pretty nice chit chat. We've got his gear there. So he's got uh, a synthroid button down shirt and some pants and those all have the traits as well. So it show you like um, this is very, you know, complicated stuff that we're never going to have to worry about. It shows you how much it's worth. It will show you what sort of temperature it can resist, how much insulation it gives you. If you're really playing hard mode, the toughest of the tough rim world, you do have to worry about that stuff. But for us, it's probably not going to be relevant. He's friends with Diz Waltney. That's pretty nice, because they, they had a, a talk about maybe playing chess together, and now they're friends. That's kind of cool. So that's his opinion of Dis Waltney, so plus 21. And Dis Waltney's opinion of Elrang is plus 26. So he likes him a little bit more than uh, Elrang likes him back. His biography here, that just shows us the character screen that we dealt with. So he hates caring and artistic. I know how he feels. Those are his skills as well, and we can rename him. Or we can banish him. So if there are particular patrons causing trouble, we can kick him out. And they can might come back with raiders. They might come back with a different society. Things like that. The world is alive, and it will feel alive. We might have relatives turning up. We, you know, Elrang's son might turn up with a, with a caravan or something like that and offer to trade with us, and we could try and recruit him. Cool things like that. This is like The Sims. If you've ever played The Sims, you will recognize these bars. Mood is his overall mood. Uh, if these bars fall below these sort of uh, tiers here, that's when bad things can happen. So it says if it falls below 35%, there's a chance of a minor break, a major break at 20%, an extreme break at 5%. So they'll have different reactions. It's random depending on those thresholds that they fall beneath. 
So say, for example, if Elrang fell below 5%, he might decide, you know what, I'm going to light this base on fire and kill out everyone in it, because I'm just that pissed off. So ideally, try and keep the mood bar pretty high. As we can see, the white arrow represents where it's going to go to if we unpause to, as we can see now that it's increasing because it's in the green, and it'll settle at that, uh, that point there. And that's it. That's his needs, and that's his health. We've, we've sort of seen that already. He's good at everything. gets the best medicine. He has no operations, but we could harvest his kidneys. No, let's not do that. So these are your notifications, CK2 style. These will be over here, rather than at the top of the screen. We've got need colonist bed, so all four of them need a bed. Hunter likes a ranged weapon, so our three hunters here, Alrang, Everqueen, and Diswaltney, need a weapon. Now, we only have two guns and one knife. I'm not going to send them hunting with a knife, because I feel like an elephant versus a knife. I wouldn't put my bets on the knife wielder, let's put it that way. And they need, uh, need recreation varieties. So this is new. Unless need three different types of recreation to remain satisfied. Right, got it, okay. Sure, dexterity play, cerebral play, television watching, telescope study. So all different types of stuff there. Sure, and uh, let's see how they go. So, place blueprints over mountain rock. That's a mod that actually allows you to build if you don't have that mod. So say for example, I can just go like that, right? They will mine over there and then build it. If you don't have that, you have to manually mine that out. You mark them to mine it and then build over the top. Very cool mod. Again, a lot of the mods that I've got right now are just um, sort of ease of access type mods. Things that don't make the game necessarily easier, but a little more convenient. All right, let's go. Speed three and watch them uh, go to work there. There's the start of their little base being built up. Everqueen's chopping down that tree so that it's not taking up too much room. And they're hauling all the goods that they crash landed with into the base there. We should probably get them equipped. So who was our best shooter? It was uh, the Everqueen, right? So why don't we give her... She's got bolt action rifle we spawned with. That's pretty good. Now it is deteriorating because it's just being left outdoors. So you need to store that properly. We've got the revolver, which is also normal quality. And we've got a knife. So the one thing in the information tab you might want to keep an eye on is the DPS. Because that's kind of important. So the damage here is 18. And it does 4.5 melee damage. I assume hitting them with the butt of the gun. 18 damage. Okay, not too bad. What about the revolver then? I imagine it's probably slightly less. Yeah, 12. 18% armor penetration, only good against armored enemies. So if you're hunting, which we are at this early game, doesn't matter. 27%. So we'll give the Ever Queen the uh, the bolt action rifle. We'll get her to equip that one. So we've got her selected, and then you right click on objects to uh, actually get her to equip them. We're going to make her wear the flak pants as well, just because she's going to be the one going out there into the wilderness and uh, fighting our enemies. Jerry King, what's up with you? Your needs seem to have dropped there. He's sick. Oh, what's up, Jerry King? Oh, he's got uh, crypto sleep sickness because obviously you've just very suddenly woken up, you know. So that will disappear over time. And of course, he's a trauma savant there. doesn't matter too much. Does Waltney, was he our second best shooter? Let's take a look. Um, you have to go on the character tab for that. That's me being an idiot. Shooting, not something you can really get them working on. All right, let's uh, see his bio here. So shooting is 14. Jerry King, yours is uh, 0. Does Waltney is 8. Arang is three, so actually Diswalton is our next best shooter, so we'll go ahead and give him the gun wherever it's just got hauled off to. It's about to be put in the base somewhere. There it is, got it. And we do start with some medicine there. We've got some, some components for building machinery. Lots of packaged meals, and those are deteriorating. Now, normally for food, you would have to build a fridge. Um, for As they're packaged survival meals, they're sort of like dried food, you know, like military rations, that type of thing. So we don't have to worry about, um, you know, refrigerating them or anything like that. Awesome. We're good then. Everybody's uh, Everyone's good. Gathering packaged meal to hauling inventory, so he's picking that up and going to carry it away. Where's he going for that? Oh, shit, there's a load over there as well. Wow, those spread out quite far, didn't they? And as you can see around the map, we've got little different things here. So we've got some cassowaries running around. We've got some uh, little flowers that we can harvest. We've got some berry bushes we can harvest from. Some uh, sandstone chunks, which we can refine down into bricks, actually build our base out of. There's a lot to talk about in this first episode. This is more of a... You know, more of a recap, more of getting to grips with RimWorld, that type of thing. And next episode is when we'll really start kicking things off. We'll leave that one there. Let me know what you think of the idea. I hope you've enjoyed RimWorld a little bit here. I hope that this is something we do for a long time because I really enjoy this game. And I'm, I'm looking forward to building our Colosseum to the death. Hope our characters survive that long. That would kind of suck if they uh, if they died off pretty quickly. Shout out to all the patrons. Sean Thornton, Danny Good, Zachary Harris, Lucas Holting, Croesus, James Ogilvy, Conspire Team, Michael Mullen, Gabriel Vanders, Hey Dog, Josh Lindy, and Tesla, Logan Thorne, Facundo, Vasquez, Noble S, Felix Deal, F Necrophilin, Zar Reaving, Quite Lachley, Brandon Matoniak, Pole Master, Princess Ugly the Dragon, Jack Allen, Imperator Augustus, Chancellor, Sheev, Palpatine, Salaki, Llewellyn Thomas, Euphrates, Jordan Campbell, Euron DeVries, I am the Lizard King, and Duncundy 2 and 7. Thank you all very much for your support. You guys will get the next episode a day early. If you're interested in that, head over to the Patreon and have a look. Um, just go up a day earlier than everyone else's. Don't worry. There's not going to be any, like, uh, spoilers or anything like that going out, I hope. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like Remod as much as I do. And we'll uh, see you next time.